I'm happy. Yeah, I'm ready. Ready. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Neil, here we are then, just over 24 hours ahead of uh, what is a big match, I think, for everyone connected with York City. Yeah, I think so. It's um, it's been a tough season, and uh, you know when you look back at that Chester game, um, there was a lot on it. You know, not only financially, but but just to sort of carry a good feeling across and all of a sudden you're just that one game away, you know, and you're starting that fourth round qualifying and we had to travel to Needham for the replay and you know <laughs> and, and you know you've got to get through them rounds and all of a sudden you go, oh you know, just one more and, and you're in with the big boys. So yeah it's a big game. It's it's nice to just have a nice feeling away from the pressures of the league. Um, it's nice to be underdogs <laughs> because we've uh, we've been expected to win the games before and um, hopefully it'll be a really good occasion. What sort of pressure do you put yourself on your team under that head of this game? Uh, I put myself under pressure, I don't put the team under, so I, I, it's trying to sort of give them a way that they're going to win the game and give them clarity and make them believe they can, um, and uh, you know, without putting any pressure on them. Um, but myself, it's a challenge, you know, we're up against a good team, good manager, good players and uh, you know I've got to find a way to make sure that we don't get exposed by that and we're competitive and we give them a really good run. I suppose especially when it is on live on national television you don't want your side to be embarrassed you want to put a good show in for everyone who's watching on telly as well as those that are in the ground. Yeah of course and um, as a manager you can look at it and go right okay you know they've, they've mixed up their shape they've played several different shapes so we go okay you know, let's, let's make sure the lads are prepared make sure that we're not caught out by anything Make sure they all know their jobs, <coughs> how we're going to attack, how we're going to defend, and then you still need them to go out and get their one v one defending right and, and not switch off because good players will punish them. Supporters, I think, if you support a football club, you go back over the years, you always look back at the big cup games. We all know the league is the most important, but I think if you ask any York City support, they'll talk about games against Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, QPR when they're in the Premier League. It's not really the Curzon Ashton has been for York City in the past, the main heads as it was at the weekend. This is a chance for you to make lifelong memories for many, many York City fans. Yeah, the FA Cup has that ability and we're live on telly, so um, terrestrial telly as well, so all of a sudden you've got a, a wider audience and it's just a chance to, you know, not put you on the map, but because York City is a wonderful city and a great football club, but it's just a chance to maybe show that you are still around and you are uh, pushing in the right direction and we need to... Uh, the lads to put a performance in to do that. And you can go back to your own experiences. Do you call on your own experiences and tell some of your players about your own experiences in the FA Cup? I don't want them to fall asleep if I start talking about my experiences. Um, no, I don't think you tell them about it. I think you do draw on them both, you know, as a player I got to semi-finals of, of the FA Cup and the League Cup. Um, as a manager I got to the third round, played away at Spurs at Wembley and, and home to Liverpool. And I draw on them experiences because prepping for, uh, you know, back then it was a Premier League team, but prepping for a team that are leagues higher than you and potentially have got superstars in the team or, or good players in the team, it's very hard to, to do a, an 11 11 in training and cause all the problems you need to cause for the lads to be ready for what they might experience. So there's a way of doing that that I did for the Spurs game and the Liverpool game that seemed to work. So I've tried to carry some of it on and, and overload us. Um, let's hope they can produce on the day. We talked about, especially I suppose, about uh, the need a market game, about what would need to go right for them to cause an upset. Is it the same now for your side? Yeah, I think, you know, are we going to have the majority of the ball? Probably not. Um, are we um, going to have <coughs> most final third entries? Probably not. So we've got to be really resilient at one end and defend really well and, and ask them to do something very good to, to break us down. And then we've got to take our opportunities of, of creating our moments. And even then, if you only have three or four in a game, you need to take one or two of them to, to really put the cat amongst the pigeons. So, um, yeah, lots needs to go right. But I think the work that you do consistently over that 95 minutes or so between the boxes is going to be crucial to, to stop you getting overrun. From speaking to four or five of the players on Tuesday, they certainly all said the right things. They certainly came across as though they believed they could cause an upset, which I suppose is part of the battle. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, compared to where we was when I arrived, hopefully the boys do feel like we'll have a game plan, we'll know what we're doing. Um, I think the team spirit's a lot better than it, than it was when I arrived. So there's all of these things. It can create a really good feeling that, you know, we're going into a December, I know we've got the FA Trophy next week, but we're going into a December 
uh, will a game start to come thick and fast around Christmas? And if you've got that little carrot of, of something in January that could be magical, it, it really does help. So for me, it's a big game for, for our whole December, really, in many ways, to try and at least give ourselves a chance. Your team, first of all, Alex Woodyard, did you get the red card overturned? Yes, we did. But you said that with a big smile on your face. Are you, are you slightly surprised? Did you put in thinking you would get it over Turks? It doesn't happen that often. I, we put in believing that it was a wrongful dismissal, but proving that and getting people to look at that and say he should never have been sent off um, is, is a lot harder. So we're delighted that, that that's happened. Um, and uh, and so will Woody be. Um, and it just... just you know, it, it proves it was harsh at the time. Excellent news, I suppose, then, for you. Elsewhere, I know you're sort of working with one hand tied behind your back because of the injury situation. Um, it looks looking in from the outside as a, maybe three quarters of your side sort of picks itself. So is there any new injuries that, we, that we're not aware of at the minute or people who maybe are available that we, we maybe wouldn't have thought so? Can you tell me what my team is then? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, Quevin Castro phoned in sick this morning so he, he won't be available, um, Ollie Green struggled to get in this morning because of the, the weather conditions and the police had blocked off three roads around by him so he struggled again today so um, no I think by and large you know we've got obviously the cup tied, Will Davis is cup tied and uh, and so is George but but you know that's what it is. Um, We've got to come up with a plan with the with the rest of the squad. I, I don't think we've got enough players fully fit and, and available for selection to, to fill our bench. But um, what we'll have, we'll, we'll give it everything. David Stockdale coming back in and goal. I know George Sachs Kenworthy has been really good since since he came in. But that must be quite nice to know that you can call on someone who has lots of experience of big matches. Listen, there's nothing between David and George. They're both really good goalkeepers. Really good goalkeepers. Um, you know, George has come in taken to it like a, a fish to water, really stepped up to full time training and and been been not pleasantly because I knew how good he could be. Um, David's a class goalkeeper. You see it every day in training and, and even just the way he talks to the players, the people in front, he gives me confidence, let alone giving the back players confidence. So, you know, there is simply nothing between the two of them. Um, you could pick any one of them and feel confident. So it's not like David's a a cup goalie and George is a league goalie, it's just at the moment George has got the shirt and played well. Um, there might come a time where George needs a break or gets tired or, or whatever and, and I feel like we've got two really good goalkeepers. And you talk about not being able to fill your bench, is that just because the players that you don't have available to you or the players that you're just not willing to put on them? I don't know if you can bring in some of the youth team or the younger lads just for the experience. Listen, it's uh, I haven't seen much of the youth team because we've been so busy trying to sort the first team side of things out. I, I don't believe, and I know people go, oh, it'd be nice to have it for the experience. I don't believe players who aren't fit enough, who haven't trained uh, regularly enough, who haven't done well enough in training, uh, whatever the reasons are, should be given a place on the bench because we can have more subs. I'm sorry that uh, people might say, oh yeah, but it would be nice. I don't believe that. I think people need to earn their place in this football club, in the 16, in the 19, in the 20, whatever it is. And if we've only got 16, 17 players that we can fill the bench with that warrant that I'm going to use, that are fit enough for me to use, then that's what I've got to use. Otherwise, I kill myself. I put people on the bench who aren't really up to it, and then people say, well, why didn't you bring him on? And because you put them on the bench, but you knew they weren't up to it, you just put them on there just to, to fill a seat. It's not the right way to do it. We're good. Having a pretty decent season. <coughs> the table's a little bit misleading because the eight points they have deducted. Yeah, I think um, done a great job, played really good football, um, got lots of good players there. Um, you, know, you start going through the squad, you, know, you don't pay much attention because they're not in your league and then you draw them and you start looking and you go, oh, OK, I tried to sign him, I've tried to sign him when I was at Wimbledon, I tried to do this when they were younger. And they're, they're lo there's lots of good players in there, lots of pace, brave the way they play. Um, the manager's really got a good way of playing and you know they'll 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 play you watch some teams try and press them high, you watch some teams that like you've got to look at your own team and go up, what can we do? What are my players capable of and, and what's our best game plan to, to get something in the game? And like you said earlier, we've got to get everything right to cause the upset, but that's what the FA Cup's about, it's magical. And obviously you didn't go and watch them Tuesday because you were here with the fans for them. Did you have anyone there? And has the way that maybe People go out scouting teams now because everything's available on video and changed a little bit to maybe 10 or 15 years ago. 
Yeah, it's always good to see live. So uh, Tony McMahon went to watch Wigan. Um, Coxie went and watched a couple of players in League Two. Uh, our sort of chief top of, top recruitment guy was uh, another guy, another game lower down watching a player um, there. So we, we we had players out everywhere. Um, I was in here entertaining, um, but uh, I'd already watched three or four of Wigan's games, different shapes, how they play them types of players who will cause us problems where where maybe we can get a bit of joy. So I've done that. Mac has kind of reaffirmed that to me today. Um, you know, Joe the goalkeeping coach is helping us with the analysis. He's been brilliant. We go through all the set plays. All, you know, we the players get every scenario possible so that they're ready for the game. It's just whether we can deliver on the night. I don't know we regularly talk about the crowd, but I think it's right again that we do this weekend. It's gonna be a huge crowd, the biggest crowd that you you've managed in front of here at the LNER. And they can really play a big part, can't they, in getting behind your side? Yeah, last time we had a big crowd, we didn't really um, do ourselves any favour. But um, yeah, no, they can. And you know, it's one of them. Respect the opposition. Uh, you know, we're not going to outplay Wigan. That's not going to happen. We've got to make sure that the the cup ties alive, and and there's a chance of us getting a result in it for a longer period. We don't want to be two, three nil down where we've just try to play open and expansive and, and let them cut through us. So they, if the fans respect that and, and, and uh, get behind you know, everything we do, defending, work rate, effort, um, and then the quality moments we can have, um, it, hopefully we can have a really exciting night with a lot of us. Thank you. Neil, Wigan head here in buoyant form, uh, one loss out of 11, but your side have developed a resilience as well. Particularly if you look back at the Maidenhead results, you know, with 10 men. Are you happy with where you are at the moment? Um, I'm happy that we've improved in areas. I don't think, you know, we're, we've gone from, from sort of there to, 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 to really high up. I think we still get things wrong, but I think the fitness levels are higher. The effort, the nitty gritty, the tracking runners, the defending for your teammates better. Um, and because of that, we're in games more often, and, and the team spirit certainly feels better. And, and that, I thought that showed with with how we played on Saturday in a tough game. How do you prepare your side for a team working at a much higher level, a lot more clinical? Yeah, um, how do you prepare? It's you have to try and overload your team and stress them. So when I was at Wimbledon, we played Spurs. We played 13 v 11 all week and gave the opposition two extra players because I wanted the players to feel like that, what it might be like in the game and um, by and large put in a good performance because of it. So you know, you have to try and stress them and that's what we try to do, stress them, put them into all the different scenarios they're going to face and, and like you say, you know, if Wigan's got their A game and their front players are in the form that they were in on, on Tuesday night against Fleetwood then, then it might be a tough afternoon because if you've got top individual players they're going to cause you problems. With regards to the approach to the game as well, it's a, a fine line, isn't it, between, between keeping the lid on players so they're not over and they think clearly <coughs> when they go on the pitch, but getting them just right to, to go from the off? Yeah, I think they will be right. We, you know, we've given them real clarity on different systems we're going to might play, how we play against them, what our game plan is with the ball and how we try and attack what our game plan is without the ball, who presses where, what zones we, we do that in. We've, we've, we've tried to give them total clarity. And if you can give the players clarity, there shouldn't be anxiety, there shouldn't be that, um, I don't know whether to, I don't, and especially know, knowing that we're the underdogs and we're not expected to win the game. Um, I'd like to think as a player that's a great place to go out onto a football pitch and, and play football. With other sides, have you ever had anybody that's gone off script and showboated uh, just because the cameras were there? Um, not really, um, not particularly. Um, it, it's been at times you've set the team up to show the respect to the opposition and maybe they've shown them too much respect. We had that at Wimbledon when we played Liverpool. We first 20 minutes we showed them too much respect and we found ourselves 1-0 down and we hadn't really got our game plan going. And the moment the boys just raised things a little bit and had a little bit more of a front foot attitude. We had a real game in our hand. It was only two good Steven Gerrard goals that beat us. So, um, yeah, I think it's just making sure that we show them respect, but we're not scared to go, you know, it's like a boxing match. You have to show somebody that you can punch as well, otherwise it becomes an attack for defence game. With regards to the squad, obviously it's a mixed bag, but a real bonus that you've got that red card overturned for Woodyard. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, you know, I was looking at all different scenarios. Tuesday, we didn't know. 
So we did a bit of work and training. We're looking at all different scenarios of who would play where. And I was trying to get a feel for it in Tuesday. Then we got the news today, so we looked at a couple of scenarios today before we named the team. So, um, yeah, it's great to have that extra body, certainly somebody that, that can do a good job. Off the pitch, you've got a huge amount of experience in the FA Cup. Obviously, David Stockdale as well on the pitch. You need leaders like that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, David's he's such a good talker, understands the game almost like a coach on the pitch. Um, you know, and, and to be fair for all as George has come in and, and, and been brilliant and calm, David's obviously got a bit more of a voice with his experience and a bit more know-how, so I think he's going to need it because he might be put under a bit of pressure on, uh, on Friday night. Do you enjoy it? I mean, do you get the space and time to just take a step back and think, yeah, this is what I, you know, I've had this in the past and it's really enjoyable? Yeah, I do, I do I enjoy coaching, enjoy every, every test that we face. Um, especially if the boys go out and we, we we execute things well and we do do us proud, do me proud, do the club proud, and that's the thing. It's just it's lovely just seeing the buzz around the place and people talking about there could be six and a half thousand and the TV cameras are here and you know even when I've been at different clubs and Solihull and we've had TV cameras there and people say oh, you're putting Solihull on the map. It's just nice to play a part, you know, a big part in the history of a football club and hopefully, like you said. Give, give the memories that people will talk about further down the line. You're absolutely right. It is hopes or dreams. Do you have a message for the fans, just as a last uh, last thing? Just be noisy. They always are. Be noisy. Um, you know, get behind everything we do. It's going to be a tough evening. We're going to have to boys. We're going to have to run some hard yards. Um, and uh, if the fans come in with that expectation, then then they'll get right behind the boys. It'll be a good good evening, hopefully. Thanks and good luck. Thank you. Uh, um, good afternoon. Um, I know you just touched on Holly Green obviously facing the weather conditions on his way in this morning. How pleased were you to extend his luck? Yeah, great. He's honestly he's, he's such a pleasure to work with, and it, it's sad that you can't always say that about young people you're having on loan. And I've had various young people on loan and. And uh, the way they go about things isn't right, or they haven't been, you know, brought up with the right sort of values in that respect. But Ollie Green is a is a throwback to, to what I was like as a young kid. First one in every day, polite, always comes and shakes your hand after training, or when he goes home says goodbye. Always asks questions, want to improve, trains hard. So he's he's an absolute pleasure to work with, and and you know having him around the place is, is brilliant. And just touch on training again, we were having a chat with Ollie Dyson on Tuesday and he was saying he's a bit frustrated that he's not got as much game time as he'd like, but that he's been working really hard on the training pitch. As people like Scott Burgess have shown, you really can get your place in the squad by doing that. How important is that to you? Yeah, listen, no one should be happy not to play football. And this is the bit I say to the players all the time. I, you know, I've got however many players I've got, but. I've got 11 people I can keep happy on a Saturday or a Tuesday. Um, that's all I can keep happy. Everybody else outside that 11 shouldn't be happy. But there's a difference between shouldn't be happy, get your head down, work, come and speak to the gaffer, you know, however you go about that side of things, or there's uh, not happy and sulk and don't train well and mope about the place and have a poor attitude. And that's the crucial part, and DICE has certainly been got his head down, come and spoke to me, we had an adult conversation, same with Scott Burgess. Scott Burgess never got in a squad for a huge number of games, but trained his socks off in between, and eventually I kept watching him, watching him, watching him, and went, do you know what, next opportunity I get, he's going in. As then, obviously it's proved quite fruitful for Scott, obviously from set pieces, I think he's got maybe seven or eight assists now, just how much of an aerial threat do you think that you might be able to close to win him? Um, I don't look at I never really look at games where I might look at the opposition and say Mark, they're big and we've got to be mindful of their set pieces. I never look at ours. We've got different routines we might try and do from set plays to cause the opposition a problem. I never look and think we can aerially dominate a team because no matter what you think, when you go up the levels, they're they're stronger. You know, Premier League guys, you don't realise nearly everyone's six foot two, six foot three, um, and <coughs> at League One they're stronger, they're physical. They've got more know-how, so I don't ever think of it like that. I think if we can score from a set piece, great, but we've got to get a lot of things right before that. And just how much do you think that 
this test day is going to decide who obviously, can, like you said, dominate the ball, going to be up a, definitely stepping up a few levels. How much do you think that's going to benefit the squad in the long run? Uh, I don't know about long run. I think it's. I think we're in. I hope we're in the right place to be able to deal with this. You know, if you'd have, if we'd have had this tie six, eight weeks ago, I'm not sure we'd have been anywhere near ready to to be able to at least do ourselves justice. I feel like we're in a better place to be. Obviously, you know, missing you know <coughs> Will Davis who's cup tied and and Depot's injured is a big blow because they're two players that can make things happen that, that we might need in the game, but it is what it is. Um, I think we're in a good place to at least have a right go at this game. I would say I think the underdogs for really the first time in the competition this season. Do you think that will benefit the squad rather than having the expectation that the other two ties might have been? <coughs> um, I hope so. I just said then, um, as a player, to be able to go on that pitch with a real game plan to respect the opposition, but know how you're going to attack them as well, um, and know that you know you're not expected to you know outplay them and, and win the game. You're expected to, to just give everything. Uh, for me, that should make you go with the shackles off, and that's why I think so many teams in the FA Cup can cause upsets because if the shackles off and everyone plays to their maximum, you always give yourself a great chance. I think that's it for me.